phone is overheated. Like, I ain't even got a chance to really record a video. So, how's it hot? So, I got my air conditioning on. And hopefully that keeps this video going. Ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about how these parents are so jealous of their own kids. Narcissistic parents are so jealous of their own kids, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm going to tell you something else. Seriously, it, it, for real, it, like, it's even worse when it's like the narc father being jealous of, well, no, it's not. Because I was going to say it's even worse when the narc father is jealous of his son because they're both men. Or the narc mother jealous of her daughter because they're both women. But in reality, no. Because I'm a man and I, I know. <laughs> Like, the narc mother would be jealous of her own fucking son. It's so sad. And the narc father would be jealous of his daughter, who he's supposed to love and protect, ladies and gentlemen. Think about it like this. Think of the animal kingdom. You have some animals that are very nurturing to their children. Like dogs, for example. Or, like, almost every other mammal except them like look at like for example look at crocodiles damn even crocodiles nurturing to their kids shit <laughs> let's just keep it real but there is some animals that actually eat their young ladies and gentlemen I like to classify those like narcissists they actually eat their young their young ain't even able like seriously it's a lot of like animals that actually eat their young like bearded dragons what's another animal that's what eat their own fucking young it's more I just can't think of them right off the bat but you guys get where I'm coming from and the narcissistic but you done been so good to your narcissistic parent you've done everything they ask you to do you compliment them you enjoy the time around your narcissistic parent because this is the person that you should love and protect you. You ain't never had, like if anything, if you beefing with anyone, you ain't trying to beef with no family member, let alone a mom or a dad. That's how you know it's just weird, bizarre, and just fucked up. Because it's just like, I'm your child. I don't want to beef with you. I'm your ally. I'm not your enemy. I'm not your op. <laughs> they don't care. Jealous of their own kids. I believe a lot of the reasons they be jealous of the way their kids look. They be jealous of the way their kids think. They be jealous of the way their kids walk and talk. And they also be jealous of the way that their kids is making a better life for themselves than an art parent ever made for themselves. Well, that's your fault. You a fucking artist. Ain't nobody tell you to be that way. You chose that path. So how could you fault and blame me? They don't care, ladies and gentlemen. They don't care. That's where the no empathy part comes in. See, a lot of people try to reason with, okay, well, why, why, why? When there's no empathy involved, that explains it all. There is no reason. They're just fucking evil. And that's just that. And that's just the way things are. And you know what? I'm going to tell you guys something. The narcissists love to tell double-sided stories. They will tell you... Uh, now, they'll have no family members coming around them and tell you that, oh, they're, all their family members are against them. So, it'll confuse you, ladies and gentlemen. Because you'll think, oh my gosh, maybe their family are narcissists. And that's the reason why, you know, they've been, they're the black sheep. And don't even realize that's the narcissists all along. The family avoiding they crazy ass. That's why it's very important to get your facts before you start believing or, you know, forming an opinion or a judgment off of what somebody said. Because people can tell you anything nowadays, ladies and gentlemen. Let's just keep it real. They will tell you that somebody stole from them when really they're the thief. They will tell you that somebody's trying to kill them when really they're the murderer. You get what I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen? You have to watch these things. Watch out for these things. I'm jumping on the interstate. I'm hauling ass. about how 
they love to just hit the button press it. They know what your reaction is going to be. They know what you're going to say to them trying to press your buttons. When they try to press your buttons and do certain things, they just try you just, just to do it. That's how you know they're so used to running over people and boundaries. You got to watch a person that's always trying you with different things. Trying to get you to drive, but you got suspended license. Come on, get up here. And you're like, hell no. Nah. I already told you my situation. You got to watch a person that's always trying to try you with different things. They want you to try a specific drug and you ain't never took that shit. And they know you're going to tell them no. But think about it. That's how you know it's a narcissist because what if you were to say yes? What if you were to not stand up for yourself and say yes? Would that person let it go? You have to think about that. Would that person let it flow? Yeah, they will. Because narcissists love to see just how much they can get away with. Ladies and gentlemen. They can't stand me in this day and age. <laughs> I guess I'm the new narcissistic life coach. Huh. I'm going to tell you like it is. I'ma tell you like it is. And when you and then when you mention the word narcissist, they light up. Because they know that's what they are. They know that's what they are. It's just so like, but what I find so weird about them is just their movement. Their, could you imagine what they're doing when nobody's around them, when they're riding in the car alone, when they're at home alone and nobody's around? Cameras can capture it all, ladies and gentlemen. Cameras can capture it all. That's why I always encourage you guys to get cameras on your properties. Get cameras on your property. You can waste your whole lifetime, ladies and gentlemen trying to understand and trying to reason with people like this it's never going to happen it's never going to work you will never ever ever be able to reason with the person that's narcissistic ever ever and right when you think you got your point across they'll always do something fucked up in the end to show you that what you were saying you weren't saying nothing That's why I encourage, and I told somebody, it's best to just go ahead and mourn. When you have a narcissistic family, go ahead and mourn their loss as if you don't have no family at all, okay? Because it's best for you to go ahead and get through the grieving stage and move on with your life than to sit back and wait and think that they're going to change because they're not. They are not going to change it because they choose not to change. It ain't nothing keeping them from changing. They can effortlessly say, you know what, I'm going to stop doing this evil deed. No. There be certain times where, and you can tell because the narcissist will reflect on things they've done and be like, I'm not going to be like that anymore. But they're not talking, they will not never say, I'm not going to be an evil bitch anymore. They're going to say, I'm, I ain't going to do that because I ain't going to change my ways. Crazy ladies and gentlemen, crazy. Pray to the A. Crazy is what they are. Crazy. Scientists be trying to understand them, but they never will. Well, it's a cluster B personality disorder. This, you'll never understand it. Because, see, when it goes physics and the spiritual world, mm -mm, no. Spiritual world is a whole different ballgame, ladies and gentlemen. It's a whole different ballgame. Hell, I just experienced sleep paralysis yesterday. <laughs> 
And you know what? It seems like every time I have an episode like that, I'm always thinking of Jesus because I know he's going to get me away and out of it.